This video is all about proof. Firstly we're going to prove that 3 equals 1. So let's subtract 2 from each side. Therefore 1 equals minus 1. Now let's square each side. Therefore 1 equals 1. True. Therefore 3 equals 1. Now it may be surprising to know that 3 doesn't equal 1. This is clearly rubbish. This is not how you prove things. If you're asked to prove something, you don't just start with the thing you're trying to prove. You don't just start with this and work on it, end up with true, and therefore say the original thing is true. This is not how you prove things. Now, here's a proof that if you take any number and square it, it's the same as the number itself. For example, if a equals 1, uh, the left-hand side of that equation equals uh, 1 squared, which is 1. The right-hand side is just 1. So the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. Therefore, uh, that's true, so a squared equals a. Better be careful, though. It may only work for that particular example. Let's take another example. Let's take a equals naught. Left hand side is naught squared, that's naught. Right hand side is naught. Left hand side equals right hand side. Therefore, a squared equals a. Therefore, a squared equals a is true. Now again, you may be shocked to know that this is not true. If, uh, just in case it's not that obvious to you, if you take 3 and square it, that's 9. 9 doesn't equal 3. So this is not how you prove things. It's another way that you don't prove things. You don't prove things by taking some examples and saying, well, it's true for that, therefore it must be true for everything. So again, this is absolute rubbish. Here's a proof that if you take two numbers and add them, and take the same two numbers and subtract them, it's the same as squaring one and squaring the other. For example, a equals 10, b equals 2. The left hand side is 10 plus 2, the right hand side uh, multiplied by 10 minus 2, that's 96, and the right hand side is uh, 10 squared, that's 100, minus 2 squared, that's 4 which is 96. Now this is not how you prove things. Here's an example. But an example is not enough to prove something. Here's the proof. The left hand side is the same as a squared plus ab minus ab minus b squared. If you're not sure about that, what have I done? I've done a times a, that's a squared. I've done a times, sorry, I've done a times b, that's a b. I've done a times minus b, that's minus a b. I've done b times minus b, that's minus b squared. This is a squared minus b squared, since a b minus a b is zero. So that equals the right hand side, therefore a plus b times a minus b equals a squared minus b squared, and the proof is complete. Now this is how you prove things. This Notice that these symbols here are not equal signs, they're equivalence signs. The left hand side is always going to be equal to that. It's going to be equivalent to that. So these are equivalent signs and it's the equivalent signs that you use in a proof. 
let's explore this more on the next on the next page. Let's think about these four mathematical expressions. Some of them are equations to be solved, and some of them are statements that are always true. 5 plus 2 is always 7. So 5 plus 2 is equivalent to 7. Is x plus 2 always equal to 7? No. It's true when x equals 5, but only for that value. So this is an equation. So there's an equals sign there. Is a times a plus b always equal to a squared plus a b? a times a is a squared, a times b is a b. Yes, so that is always true. Whatever a is, whatever b is, that's always true. This expression is equivalent to that expression. So there's an equivalence there. Is x times x plus 7 always equal to minus 12? No. x squared, uh, so therefore x squared plus 7x plus 12 equals 0. Oh, it's my favourite quadratic equation. Brilliant. x plus 3, x plus 4 equals 0. Therefore x is minus 3 or minus 4. So this statement is only true when x is minus 3 or minus 4. So it's an equals sign, not an equivalent sign. In proofs, we need the equivalent sign.